Hi, hey, hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. I forgot what I was gonna say. Hi, Tom. Do you know what I was gonna say? We are back at it again. I have read a couple of Jenny Colgan's backlist, backlog, whatever we're calling it, her older books, let's say. Because I know, not, I don't know but I love her newer work, her latest work. So, <laughs> they're plural, there are loads of them. I read a couple of books, so I'm not going to talk about that. Um, so I read a couple of books, and now I'm going to talk about them. That happens sometimes, I don't know. I'm very... Very red in my face today. Anyway, so, first off we have... Amanda's wedding. So Melanie and Fran are two wisecracking Londoners who simply cannot believe that their old school friend Amanda, Satan's own PR agent, is getting married before they are. And the dude she's marrying isn't just like any old dude around the corner. No, no, he's a lad. Or if you don't know what a laird is, it's a Scottish lord. It also so happens that Fraser, the laird, is an old school crush. Is an old schoolgirl crush of Melanie's. <laughs> Yikes. At the same time as that's happening, Alex, Melanie's old boyfriend, who, by the way, broke up with her by just leaving for America and she found out by, you know, ringing up his flatmate and wondering, you know, where, where is he? Where's he gone? And he said, well, he's, he's sort off to America. But, you know, she's obsessed with him, of course. Of course she is. Anyway, so Alex is coming home and what does Mel do? Well, she goes off to Heathrow and waits for him for like 15 hours because of course he has not told her when he's landing so she's just spending a full day just waiting around for him. I mean red flag, red flag moment just from both sides. Honestly, from both sides. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fran and Mel, Mel and Fran, have found themselves uninvited or possibly not invite, invited at all, I don't remember, to Amanda's Hindu. So what do they do? Well, they talk to Fraser's brother and gets themselves invited to his stag do instead. Brilliant. Brilliant. Questions that this book gave me. Why or why is it so important to either become rich and famous yourself or marry rich? Like, why can't you just be a normal person? And also, Alex, who is super unreliable, I mean, he did bugger off to America and didn't tell Mel, but Mel is still just so set on moving in with him. Why? Why? I mean, that's kind of the point where he buggered off to America because she mentioned moving in together and he was like, uh-oh, and ran off. And didn't tell her, by the way. But now he's back and she's like, well, let's move in together. And he's like, okay then. Why? Are you so scared of being alone? There are other dudes out there. Just go find someone else, honestly. It's not that difficult. I mean, it is difficult to find good ones, but it's not difficult to find another one. So, this book is very much like, stab, 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 stab. Everything's happening at once and not all of it makes much sense. 
Although I do very much like that it ended on a happy note, even though I do think she makes the wrong decision in the end. But I mean, that's me problem. That's not the book's problem, honestly. And book number two. Don't know what that was. Is my very 90s romance aka talking to Addison so depending on which version you're picking up I believe talking to Addison is the original title and then someone re rebranded it I'm not sure about either title I'm not gonna lie so in this one we have Holly and Holly she moves into a flat chair with a strange ensemble of well flat mates <laughs> In one of the rooms, she discovers Addison. Mm -hmm. Addison just happens to be this... I almost spilled my coffee there. <laughs> Addison just happens to be this totally gorgeous computer nerd. A lot of things happen. I don't know what, quite honestly. But... After much trial and tribulation, Holly manages to pry Addison away from his computer screen only for him to have an accident and end up in a coma. See, don't, don't leave your computer screen. Accidents happen. Terrible accidents happen. So, this book is a bit of a mess. There's like a million things happening and not a lot of them make much sense together or apart or any which way, I don't know. <sighs> it's definitely one of those books that ends up on the what was the point of this book pile. That can be a problem with like contemporary romance or just contemporary books in general that Sometimes there's no goal with it. There's no end point. It's just like a bunch of random things happening and it's thrown into a book. At least that's what it feels like. I will say this though, there is a point in the book where it's either the nurse or the doctor. I don't remember. This is how much is stuck with me. But they say, I need to administer the anti-dying medication. There's not actually such a thing, but sure. <laughs> Moving on to book number three. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. That was a weird combination of different accents. I don't know. Just, I have no words. So, what does an it girl do when she loses all her money? That is the question this book poses. So after Sophie loses her father very unexpectedly, she is told that she has to try to make her own way in the world for six months before she can receive her inheritance. So having no money to her name, she moves into a hovel on Old Kent Road with four smelly boys. So the way this character is described, she is supposedly a bit vapid and very like, outside fixation, look fixation words, which is something I don't really think comes across. Sure, she's never clean before, she's never cooked or anything like that. And I mean, not cooking, but cleaning is basically the first thing she learns how to do. Ish. She takes on everything head on. She doesn't like, oh, ew, I don't want to do that. She just does it. I mean, sure, everything goes a bit topsy-turvy, especially her love life. She cannot keep that straight, which is something that she has had practice in, let's say. Cleaning, not so much. Other things, yes. 
I mean, eventually everything kind of sorts itself out and it does have a very happy ending. But picking up this book, I expected Sophie to be like, those stupid girls that doesn't know shit. And she really wasn't. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting of the character, especially with the background she's had. She, I mean, she hasn't had to do Jackal, but yet she seems to be clever enough to figure everything out anyway. So, I mean, it works, I suppose. Also, one of the boys is called Wolverine. Yeah. And for the longest time, because he apparently has a tail, for the longest time, I questioned if he was one of the boys or if he was a dog. I'm still not sure, but spoiler, in the end, they do say something about him graduating with so-and-so honors or whatnot. <laughs> so I'm guessing he's a boy. <laughs> and the fourth one and the very last one I'm going to talk about today and probably not on before my camera dies and I have to do editing stuff. I mean, I have to do editing, editing stuff anyway, but this is gonna be two clips for me to edit instead of just the one. Ugh, what was that face? Anyway, the fourth book is The Good, The Bad and The Dumped. We all look up our exes online, but should we? Winston says no. Do you wanna come up? Where are you? Hello? Hello? Would you? Hi. Do you want to come up? Winston's going to join me. So. Posey Fairweather is over the moon when her boyfriend Matt proposes to her. Oh, he's leaving now. Okay. He wasn't into it. He wasn't into it. Oh, he's back by my feet. Anyway. So she's over the moon. But, a few days later, he dumps her. Because why not? <laughs> Crushed and humiliated, Posey wonders why all her romances have been such train wrecks. Determined to get some insights, Posey goes online and tracks down her exes to, you know, ask them which doors from Posey's past should stay closed, which might open. Can she learn from past mistakes? And what if she let Mr. Wright slip through her fingers along the way? The fact that her friends call one of her exes Lord Voldemort should set the stage for this book. So this book is quite a lot like Lucy Vine's Seven Exes, which I read recently. I'm not saying there's like any connection between them because the premise of like looking up your exes is not like it's not an original kind of thing there's loads of books out there that has that premise and i'm sure there will be loads more in the future why am i all like this today so there's a certain kind of desperation to these earlier jenny colgan characters so much so that I'm quite happy that I wasn't introduced to her books that early on, but, you know, came in sort of like in the middle of her, her book list, as it were. Now, don't get me wrong. They aren't terrible, but they aren't completely brilliant either. I don't know what's flashing on the screen. Something's flashing on the screen on my viewfinder, and it's actually bugging me a bit. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, okay? Anyway, so you can really tell though how much her writing has evolved from like the earlier books into the the newer, newer books, <laughs> as it were. Um, and you can also tell sort of like how she, like Jenny herself, has grown up. I don't know how I don't know how old she is now or how old she was when she started publishing books, but it's it's been a while, okay? It's been a while, so <laughs> she has grown up, as we all do, 
hopefully, I don't know, some don'ts. So yeah, this, this round has been a bit of a hit and miss, not as much hits as, no, not as many misses as uh, the, the previous um, round of Jenny Colgan books, backlist books I did, but it's a bit meh. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so I do have a couple of more books. I'm not sure how many. It's hard to tell because I don't really. I need to. I need, I need to look at the list. I don't. Oh me. So I do have a couple of more left to get through of the old, older, old, 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 older ones. <laughs> Uh, after that, I do believe I've kind of caught up with all her books, most of her books, because I know she's written under a different pen name as well, so, so many things, so many things. Anyway, uh, I have a couple of more books to get to, I don't know when or how or when or why, who, what, where, what, what that will be, because her older books are kind of harder to come by. Um, yeah, so we shall see when that happens. Um, but yeah, that's it for me today and for this video. And I, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.